Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number nine, day number nine. It says 3009, 3 is to indicate it's from the third edition, day 9. The problems that we solve today are the exact same problem that appeared in the first and the second edition. So if you wish to watch the original series, which is done at a much slower pace, you will find the solutions to all the problems that we are about to do from day number 30 through 34, from the first edition. As I said, there I, I go into a little bit more detail and I provide more explanations. Here we go a little bit faster. So we have a rectangular box here. We are on page number 159, question number 12 is what we are about to do, which that's where we have to pick up from. Question number 12, turn to page number 159, we have a rectangular box, so let's, let's draw a rectangular box. Let's see what we can do here. Let's draw a rectangular box. As best as we can. So there is our rectangular box. And we are going to go from this part right here, like this. And they're calling these uh, corners vertices R, S, T, and V. This is too much fuss about nothing. It's a very straightforward problem. We are told that T to U, T to U, T to U. Where is U? Well, U is down here. T to U, we are told, is 3. T to U is 3, we are told. We are told that U to V is 4. Or right there, if we know T to U and V to O, we will get to in a second. And V to R, V to R is 2. And the question simply is, what is the area of the shaded region? What is the area of this shaded region? Which is, a, which is a rectangle. Which is a rectangle. We already know, we already know one side of it because it is given to us. We already know one side of this rectangle, which is 2 right here. One side of the rectangle. We just have to figure out this side right here. Which is very straightforward because we are dealing with because we are dealing with a 3, 4, 5 triangle. A 3, 4, 5 triangle. A 3, 4, 5, this side is 3. This side is 4. This is 90 degrees. Because it's a, rectang a rectangular box. This hypotenuse, 3, 4, 5. There we go. It's very simple. The area of the rectangle is simply the area of the shaded region is simply it's a 2 by 5. It's a 2 by 5. That's it, we're done. As I said, it's a very straightforward, simple problem. The answer is 10. The answer is 10. Let's go to the next one. All that fuss about nothing, right? Huh? In the next problem, problem number problem number 13. Problem number 13, on the same page, we are given a list of numbers. Well, actually, we are not given a list of numbers, but it says a list of number has a mean of 8. So, a list of number has a mean of 8. We are further told that the standard deviation is equal to 2.5. 2.5. Question is, what is the value, what is the value of an observation. What is the value of an observation? I always read as I write, so even though if you, even if you cannot read my handwriting, you just let's listen to it. What's the value of an observation? That is exactly two standard deviation above the mean. Above the mean. Two standard deviation above the mean. So let's draw our normal distribution and see what's going on. This is our mean right here. This is our mean. This is usually represented with the letter mu. And we are told that mean is 8. We go one standard deviation this way. We go one standard deviation this way as we know. We are going to capture. Not This question doesn't require all of this thing. I'm digressing right now. 
But as we, as we know, that if you move from one standard deviation to the mean, this, this observation right here is the mean plus one standard deviation. And this one is mean minus one standard deviation. And this region captures this region captures 14% of the observation, or rather 34% of the observation. And this is this covers 34% of the observation. In other words, two-thirds of all the observation fall between one mean. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing all this thing in a second. This question does not require it. You understand this question does not require this much fuss. If you move one standard deviation again, in other words, two standard deviations from the mean, this is our mean. This was one standard deviation. If you move two standard deviation, this is mean plus two standard deviation. And the symbol for, for the population, not for the sample, is this, sigma for standard deviation. Sigma for standard deviation. If you move two standard deviation, we're going to capture another 14% and another 14% here. So we have 34% and 34% is 68% and another 14 and 14, we have 28%, 6, 9. What we find is that 96% of all the, all the observations, all the observation, provided that it is normally distributed, if you're told that the, 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 the variable that in question is, is normally distributed, it's a, it has a normal distribution, then you will find that 98% of all the observations, or rather 96% of all the observations are going to fall within the two standard deviation. 96%, which means we are left with 4%, 2% is going to be in this tail, and 2% is going to be in this tail right here. Now I'll tell you why I, I shared this with you. This figure is something you will find at the bottom of page 149. If you turn to page 149, if you turn to page number 149, bottom, let's put it here. You were looking for something that is, that is two standard deviation above the mean, remember that. So this is what you're going to find at the bottom of page, what did I say, I forgot, 149, 149, do you understand? And that is what we discussed in the original series on day number 36. If you type in GRE math day 36, you will see the title, and the title is, what is a normal distribution? And that's what we talk about. Here we're looking for an observation that is two standard deviation above the mean. This is your mean, 8. Two standard deviation above the mean is this. And mean is 8, and the standard deviation we know is 2.5, we are told. So 2 times 2.5 is just 5, so it's 8 plus 5, and the answer is 13. An observation that falls two standard deviation above the mean, given the fact that the mean is 8, and given the fact that the standard deviation is 2.5, an observation of 13, is what we're looking for. Uh, 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 a value will have uh, observation will have a value of 13. In other words, in other words, in other words, let's say an exam was given to a large number of people, group where we can't have 10 or 12 people uh, to get a normal distribution. You have to have a large sample. So you an exam was given, and we, we are told that the average score, average score on that exam was 8. We are also told that the standard deviation during the in this exam was 2.5. So what does it mean, what does it mean if somebody comes to you, you know, teacher tells you, the teacher announces in the, in, in the class after the, after the exams have been distributed, after she grades her, 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 all the exams and she gives it out back to the students, she writes on the blackboard that the mean was, mean was 8, the average score on the exam was 8, and standard deviation is 2.5. And you're sitting there at your desk, and you look at your uh, exam and you find out that you had a score of 13. A score of 13. What does it mean? What, mean, what it means is that, what it means is that because, because there are only 2% of the observation that fall in this tail, what it means is that if you score 13, you are in the 98th percentile. Only 2% of the people, only 2% of the people scored above you if you have a score of 13. Only 2% of the people scored above you. Similarly, similarly, if it turns out that you're sitting there proudly with the exam in your hand and you have a score of 8 minus 5, which is 3. If you have a score of 3 and the average score in the class is 8 and the standard deviation is 
you can probably tell everybody that two percent of people managed to score below you if you don't want to tell them that 98 percent of people scored above you do you understand let's move on problem number 14 problem number 14 we need the room Problem number 14. We are given a distribution that looks something like this. Let's, let's break it up into four parts first. There we go. We are told that we are told that uh, I have written in my notes I am. What do you suppose that is? Internal medicine. These are doctors who specialize in a given field. It says distribution of 200,000 doctors. 200,000 doctors in the country, let's say, and this is their distribution by their speciality. And we are told that one quarter of the doctors specialize in internal medicine, whatever that is. We are told that further, further 24%, so if this line, I'm going to read right, if this line represents a quarter of the circle, then 24% is going to be way over here, very close to it. This is 24%, and that represents surgery. We are further told that 21% are pediatrics. So listen to me. Since this is since this is 24, that means this small slice is 1%, and we need 21%. So I'm going to cut out here. This must be 5%. If this is 5%, since the whole from here to here is 25%, and we just cut cut out five, this remaining part must be 20%. This slice was 1%, and that represents a 21% total. 21% total and that is pediatrics and the rest are miscellaneous I'm not going to list them so this is 5% this is 25% you put them together this this plus this the rest 30% is miscellaneous this is all we need this is all we need for this question as a matter of fact we didn't even need this much detail the question simply is which discipline has more than 40,000 physicians how many disciplines have doctors a number of doctors uh, that is more than 40,000. Let's find out what 40,000 is as a percentage of 400,000. 200,000 is the total number of doctors and 40,000. Let's see if I know what that percentage is, shall we? It's a very simple question. We see zeros, a whole bunch of zeros there. We see we see three zeros here. Let's divide top and bottom by a thousand. It's gone. Let's divide by uh, let's divide top and bottom by 10 again and we end up with 4 over 20, 4 over 20 is same as 10 over 20, 4 over 20 is same as 2 over 10, it turns out that it represents 20%. The question was, in which disciplines do we have number of doctors? In our country we know we have 200,000 doctors and we also know that they specialized based on this chart. Based on this chart, 21% are Pediatrics, 24% are 24% are um, uh, specialized in surgery, 25% are specialized in internal medicine, and the rest of the doctors make up 30%. Well, the answer is very straightforward. How many disciplines do we see where we have more than 40,000 doctors? We know now that 40,000 represents 20% of the total. It's very simple. There are only three of them: internal medicine, which has, which is going to have more than more than. 40,000 doctors because it is 25% total. 20% represents 40,000. So anything that is more than 20% will have the number of doctors more than 200, more than 40,000. We have surgery and we have pediatrics. Those are the three answers. Pediatric, surgery, and internal medicine. And your job is to make sure that you mark all of them. Otherwise, you will not get credit. Do you understand? I think I'm going to stop right here. We're going to stop right here. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.